guys. It never seems to rain, but it pours. We were flying along at a nice, nice uh, pace with the two reefs in, as I mentioned previously. And I happened to look over the back and see some great big brown thing being dragged along behind us. So I went and had a closer look and uh, inspection and I couldn't work out what it was, but I was able to work out that it was wrapped around uh, the port rudder. So I tried to use the, the boat hook to uh, force it uh, down the rudder and free it. But, uh, sorry, but um, uh, the current was, uh, the speed that we were travelling at made it the water uh, pressure was too great. I couldn't force the boat hook down, but it's that the preventer had gone over the side. They quickly hauled it in, but too late. It's wrapped around either the propeller or the rudder. I believe it's the propeller, but the way it's, it's tight. As we come to the end of our first day sailing on the water on this leg, the Commodore is busy creating a masterpiece in the kitchen. We're about to sit down and have our supper, some sort of chickeny dish she's created, a salad, etc. And rather unusually for us, we've not done this before, we're sailing along the coast and you can see the lights all well on the coast. We're only about five or six miles off the coast at this point. Uh, we're heading roughly to this waypoint down here. We've done 71, nearly 72 miles today. And uh, that's not bad. I think it started when we started at nine o'clock. So it should be nine o'clock tomorrow morning when we find out how many we've done for the day. But we're whizzing along nicely. The wind's fine. It's a slightly awkward position. Uh, I'm running. You won't be able to see this, but I've got the, the boom out on one side, the mainsail out on one side, and the Genoa out on the other side. We're running goose wing as it's referred to. Uh, normally, I would use my preventer for that, but sadly, that is wrapped around the starboard propeller. Uh, I've had to put the starboard engine into reverse because it was just winding the uh, rope on tighter and tighter and tighter and that stops it uh, turning but I have been told that it damages your gearbox so I don't want it to be there for any longer than necessary but anyway we're whizzing along nicely at uh, 8 knots or so uh, and we've got just 13 14 knots of wind uh, almost directly behind us so supper time on day one not so bad. Well campers, it's a pretty exhilarating ride. We've got between 15 and 20 knots, it occasionally gets up to about 21 or 22 maybe, but generally speaking it's 15 to 20. But we've got six knots or so of Agulhas current going with us, so we're flying. We're sitting here at 10 knots, 10.7 knots. It does go up and down, especially if the yacht broaches a little bit, but it's sitting between 9 and 11 knots pretty much all the time. It does get down to 8 or so some of the time. But we're absolutely eating up the miles, which is just as well because the forecast is a little bit on the uh, unnerving side. But uh, hey, just have to be brave and keep going. Oh, you can see it here, it's all the boom is up here on the right hand side and then the Genoa 
is across there on the other side. And the coast is still with this. In some ways it's slightly comforting having the coast here, but actually I don't think it's any help to us whatsoever. The moon came up for an hour or so ago and it's uh, shining brightly, which is nice as well. Still doing 10 knots. Can't be bad. I've really pushed our average up. Before we were averaging 6 knots. Now we've been yeah, we've gone up to 6.4 just in the space of, I don't know, a couple of hours, two and a half hours maybe. Pushed it up to 6.4. Maximum wind speed only 23 knots, and we've made it, made it up to 13.1 knots uh, right speed over the ground. Well, comfortable speeds. Good morning, campers. Still uh, Friday morning, and uh, we're motoring. The wind has gone right round, and we're more or less straight here. The seas are absolutely everywhere, all over the shop. Uh, the wind is coming currently from the northwest, so we're not quite straight into it, but um, it's not uh, good. Uh, we decided we would motor rather than just put up with it because we want to try and beat this bad weather that's coming behind us and we want to get as much distance forward as possible so we're motoring in a very very uncomfortable sea uh, there's no white tops right there there's basically nothing much breaking apart from them two of the waves meet going in opposite directions and there's up splashing today into the sky but uh, it's just amazing how confused the seas are we've seen a few confused seas in our time a relatively short period of time that we've been sailing but nonetheless this is as confused as I've seen it still no sign of our buddy boat Mark I don't know where he is just head on down here the best speed we can manage. What speed are we managing, Commodore? What's uh, we're doing um, nine, eight, five knots, five, six, six knots, knots. Yeah, wind okay. is seven. Yeah, the wind is seven, but we're motoring more or less straight into it. Yeah. So it's not helping as much. So we've got the Jenny down in the main still up there. Uh, trying to avoid it thrashing itself to death. And we'll uh, push on. This isn't supposed to last terribly long before the wind comes round and fills in again from the northeast. So we'll have to see. Most of the models didn't actually have this wind coming from this direction. The UK Met Office did have this wind coming. Uh, the other models that did have it uh, had a much less pronounced uh, backflow along the coast than the. Uh, UK Met Office. So it looks like the UK Met Office uh, hit it on the nail this time, unfortunately. We should have believed them. We should have been even further off the coast than we are. We're about 30 miles off the coast. Oh, uh, But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Bye for now. Just uh, for comparison purposes, this is the view at the front. We have seas coming from the right starboard bow blue and we're following seas as well blue. Uh, this is only uncomfortable there's nothing more than that um, it's uh, awkward to even think about setting sails in this kind of seas because what happens is every time you get a rock and roll or something like that the wind spills out of the sails and so on so it just uh, keep moving on in this uh, uh, in this direction uh, which is the way we want to go down towards Port Elizabeth and keeping reasonably close to the coast Thank you. 
I took some video and then I thought, well, you'd like to see this. So I thought, I was, I was going to wake you, but then I thought, oh, well, well. Commodore was resting after doing her chair of the night shift. And uh, I didn't want to wake her, but I know she likes the dolphins, so I'll better do it or I'll be in trouble. So. We got the Genoa out, that was fine, and then uh, we went to raise the mainsail. We had it, it with two reefs in it left over from last night, which we hadn't changed. But the wind is only 12 knots or so, so I wanted to put uh, more sail out. And as I started to set the sail and raise the uh, main halyard, raise the mainsail up by hauling up the main halyard, I looked out the back. Uh, just to see how things were going and notice a long length of blue and white line hanging from the back of the boom. This one. It was clearly not meant to be there. There was a broken end like this. Chafe. Um, with its position it could only be one thing. It was the number one um, reef line. So the number one reef line snapped and I've just been up there and I've hacked this off because it was hanging off the back of the boom and uh, we didn't want that flapping about uh, with the, uh, when the sails are up so I just hacked it off. Uh, the result of this failure is only that we cannot use reef one. We can still use the mainsail and we can still use reef two but we cannot use reef one. So it's not quite the end of the world, but it is exceedingly annoying and it's just another breakage, another repair when we get to Cape Town. Good morning campers, to another lovely day on the Indian Ocean, but also to more problems. Sandra woke me uh, just as the dawn was breaking, the heading had gone way off and uh, we needed to do something about it. So I came up and uh, uh, made some adjustments to the heading, but as I did so and surveyed the situation, I saw that the lazy boys on the port side had snapped and the sail was hanging over the side and uh, uh, it was a shambles. So, for the last, uh, what's the time now? Uh, six, five past six. For the last hour and a half or so, uh, Sandra and I have uh, manoeuvred the uh, mainsail. I'll show you what we've done. We've manoeuvred the mainsail uh, into its bag and we've reefed it a bit like the old fashioned reefing way. Uh, morning, Cap. Morning, Colorado. Morning. To, uh, I hope I'm going to get a permanent salary because of tough work, you know. It's yeah. five in the morning. So, I'm supposed to be retired. <laughs> so I used the block in the back uh, as part of the number two, two uh, number one reefing uh, line uh, and my preventer to pull the back of the sail up onto the, the, the boom. And then Sandra and I went along and we tied it one at a time, comfing it. It's a remarkably heavy sail. But it's not just about the current, it's about the uh, winds. Um, this is the situation last night. We were here at the, the oops, at this point here, and um, all the models suggested that we should uh, come down here. And then uh, the UKMO did what Spire were doing uh, the other day, uh, heading out, uh, close inland to uh, take advantage of this kind of slot in the weather. Uh, because although this isn't too bad, this is only just 20, maybe between 20 and 25 knots. Uh, if you run it forward, if you run it forward, it quickly deepens and gets to 30, 35 knots. And uh, of course, 30, 35 knots, you're going to get gusts of up to 40, probably maybe more. 
uh, Spire completely <coughs> changed its mind and disappeared off to the south. Uh, and the European model had a complete brain fart, I think, and took us away down there. So I thought, I'm not having any of that. I will stay uh, closer inland. Um, and we, uh, we were up here, as I say. This is where we started last night at nine o'clock. I would stay inland and uh, take advantage of relatively calm winds. I mean, the wind is 15 knots or so, roughly. And uh, in 15 knots, we can do eight or knots or so. Um, so that was fine. Um, I did so because uh, yesterday this bit looked a little bit darker than it does uh, today, uh, but also because it quickly uh, changes. So we are now heading, uh, we were heading down to a waypoint uh, here, which we cut the corner on a little bit. We're now heading down to a waypoint just about where the, uh, the UK uh, model boat is here uh, off this point to get us around the corner. And then as the day progresses, the wind comes in, um, but we should already be in this, again, 10 to 15 knots. If we want more wind, we can always just go a little bit further south and uh, get a bit more wind, which is possible we might do because we're now limited to uh, two, uh, two reefs in the mainsail. Well, we've just had a lovely breakfast cooked by the commodore, who's, because it's noticeably colder today, is wearing my slippers, my nice moorland warm Shetland wool slippers, and my poor feet are ice cold blue. <laughs> That's not my problem. No, no, it's my problem. Chefs uh, always yeah. have to be comfortable. Yes. So, uh, just so here we go. Predict wind uh, using the GFS model and their variation on that. PWG has us coming way, way down here off the edge of the known world. Uh, just once round a an iceberg at the back of Antarctica and then back up to avoid the strongest winds. Uh, overnight and all the others are the same the problem with that is that it's miles you know PWG is 517 miles uh, PWE is 462 GFS the same only the, the Europeans the ECW, ECMWF is 170 miles which is roughly speaking what we've got from here to uh, the NISA uh, heads as it is so the Euro Europeans, as I say, had a caveat that they couldn't comply with our, our, our parameters and indeed you'll see they've got uh, 30 knots of wind which is more than the 25 knots that, uh, that I stipulate. I'm always ever so slightly suspicious when, uh, if my limit is 25, I see 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. It reminds me of asking for the braking action at Rome Mini. You get what, what, uh, what you require. Uh, I've got the fishing line out and the lure is obviously attracting these birds. I hope we don't catch one. Yeah, we've already had some dive and it just had a big gannet dive on it. Oh, there's one in there, there I think. Um, no, it's not coming with us, so that's alright. There's plenty of them looking at it. As I say, it's a lovely day to sail in the Indian Ocean. It hasn't taken long for the, uh, the wind to fill in uh, that's forecast. We're currently on a, a solid 20 knots, uh, between 20 and 25. Uh, which is why it's giving us good speed now, uh, which we weren't getting before. To make this uh, entry to Nizer at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, we really need to do 8.5 knots, which is a big ask uh, with only double reef mainsail and the jenny. Well the day has moved on, the wind has uh, increased perhaps uh, closer to 30 knots uh, most of the time and the seas have increased as well. 
commensurate with it. And all is still well. We're going to jive in a few moments, I think. Uh, I came into the wind a little bit uh, some time ago to try and keep the jenny filled, which I'm struggling with. Um, I'm reluctant to go goose winged in this weather, uh, it's just a bit too much. Although goose winged, I think, would probably give us a much better control. So, how are we doing now? Pretty cool and calm. The, the train is like a slow train to some way. The waves coming behind us. So not too bad. Waves? Have you mentioned waves? The sky waves. The way has uh, the day has uh, developed. Uh, this is what an hour or so is worth of 30 knots does for you. Um, we drove the boat uh, oh, about an hour ago and we found one or two issues uh, which we sorted out as best we could and um, now we're just sitting out. The yacht's roaring along at a great speed despite the fact that we, put, uh, we did put the extra um, reef in the Genoa as we jibed, just took the opportunity, it seemed silly not to, particularly because it's slightly difficult for us to do it on the port tank uh, because we need to use the starboard winch to uh, bring in the Genoa and uh, we also need the starboard winch to uh, sheet the Genoa when we're on the port tank, so a bit of an issue. Um, so we decided we would do it early rather than later because it would cause problems. I've also, because we've been getting broached so much, I've altered the autopilot setting to be a bit more responsive uh, in an attempt to keep us a little bit straighter. Uh, the waves aren't big enough, I don't believe, to tip us over, but going sideways onto waves is the way to get tipped over, so we'll. Uh, try and avoid that. Good morning everybody. Good morning Captain. Good you morning. Us on what's happening. Yes, uh, the wind died pretty much uh, before dawn and um, we uh, uh, had to start motoring. We were motor sailing initially but then the wind went round and it's now on the nose. So we're now motoring and we're approaching the knives of the heads. Uh, we're up, the Commodore of the Yacht Club up on the heads to uh, 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 talk us in and uh, we have to be there within well, basically the next 20 minutes or so so we're just making it in time and in no more and then we're going to go through and once we get through the heads uh, it should hopefully be uh, relatively easy so Yes, that was a wonderful start. Um, the, our first uh, sail into Nisla Heads for Not So Bad Crew 2022. Uh, we'll give you more details uh, because it's been quite an experience. And we believe the Nisla Heads are one of the challenging, the most challenging um, yeah. entrances or uh, yeah, entrance to a, a port, a harbour in South Africa. A and that is for the entire South Africa. So. Hello guys, we are now uh, being guided into the Nisla Heads, the famous Nisla Heads. Captain John is ready and we've got the Commodore from the new um, Nysma Yacht Club who is guiding us through. Just to the left, if you look at that red line, to the left of it. Don't see the red line, that's what I'm saying. It's just to the left of that white line, of the white line. If you see the... the, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, you see it? Yeah. This is 
Neisner guys. This is where we enter the head. This is nice that everybody, friends, family, you've got to visit South Africa at some stage if you have not been here. Beautiful part of um, the coast. We've just come off the wild coast and believe me, it was a wild coast. Well, but you know, this makes up all these beautiful views and homes and the landscape, some winelands up there as well, makes up for the challenges. You know, you've got to have a bit of um, tough time to appreciate the luxury. So that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. Good morning, guys. We're now parked up. We've had a refreshment. And uh, all as well, I just thought I'd run you through the stats. 553.5 nautical miles uh, the maximum wind speed it says was 96 knots I don't believe that for a minute uh, it was 37 knots or something uh, 37 or 38 uh, earlier and I think that's more accurate I didn't see 96 knots I don't know what happened with that thing but I do believe the 18.3, uh, I saw that and we were absolutely flying. It was like being on a Greek uh, hydrofoil ferry. We were absolutely flying. But here we are, we're in Nysna. Uh, this is the Nysna Yacht Club. Apparently they had a big function last night, so the restaurant is closed today. The 
honourable view from shortly. Very nice. And there are various shops and restaurants around the area, which looks nice. It's a beautiful day, as you can see here. In nice. It's hard to believe that we were taking part or, or being pounded by such weather, such that infinity bailed out into Port Elizabeth. The guys are obviously parked up in here in the, in the yacht club sort of uh, marina. We're on the visitors' dock or something, but uh, I don't feel we're really in the right place. But we were told to park here, so by the Commodore, so it can't be wrong. And this is the view. What do you think, Commodore? Well, this Commodore is very tired. Yes. After a very Daily night sailing. This is this is how.